Funnily enough, guys, being a leader doesn't come naturally to everyone. It doesn't come naturally to me, really, I don't think. Perhaps from looking at some of my content, maybe you think otherwise, but in my head personally, it's something that I feel like I've had to work towards. It's, it's something that I've had to become as a business owner. It is something that you have to become just generally because you have people to manage. You have a team to build, so you need to become a leader. It's one of the main principles of entrepreneurship, right? But the thing is, if you want to become a leader, there's a lot of different leaders out there that you can model from or that you can take advice and information from and you can kind of replicate what it is that they do. But the way I see things is that being a leader is all about making sure that your team deliver what you are hoping that they deliver, but they do it in a way so that they actually love working for you and doing the work. That really is what being a leader is. And you can apply that to real life events or concepts as well. You know, let's say you're in a group of people, you're all trying to figure out where to eat. The leader is the one that suggests it and then convince the others that they're gonna love it as well. And then when they go, they actually do enjoy it because the leader decided it based on the group's preferences. Okay, real simple, easy, day-to-day -day life example right there. But hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say here. Leaders are all about making sure that the group is happy and that the group is succeeding together as a team. Unfortunately, most leaders, and I'm sure you've worked in a company or you know, for a boss or, or whatever in a business, and the manager just, you know, they're in a leadership position, but they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're not really leaders, right? Most of them are just not. They don't inspire loyalty. They can't even look after themselves. They don't even go to the gym or nothing like that. They're just an unhealthy being, but they're somehow in some leadership position. I don't get it, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not saying that you have to be a healthy gym fanatic to be a leader, but someone like that doesn't really inspire confidence, okay? A leader is someone that people can look towards and trying to emulate. They want to almost become that person. That is what a true leader is, let's be honest. I know there's leaders out there that are not like that, but let's be perfectly honest here. A real leader is someone that you want to emulate and you want to become. So why would it not just make sense that if you are in a leadership position to just be the best possible person you can be? Okay, so that's number one. You have to almost lead by example. Well, you do have to lead by example. That's a normal saying that everyone says. Leading by example is making sure that you are someone that people want to emulate. And so therefore, if people want to emulate you, they then respect you. And it means that you can deliver your ideas to the team and you can get them to implement those ideas relatively easily. Sometimes you're going to come across resistance, but if you are someone that is respected and if you come with a track record of having delivered ideas and making decisions that have benefited the team, then that difficulty or that friction is going to be reduced massively because people have already seen via your experience that you're able to make those good decisions, whereas most people cannot in these leader positions, right? Again, just from my background working in a nine to five, I'm sure you as well, you've experienced leaders that, or managers that aren't really leaders. They just don't inspire confidence. You don't wanna be them. You don't wanna emulate who they are. You don't respect them. And then when they try and create new ideas or want a team to do something new, or when they try and direct people, there's just so much friction. So in order to eliminate that, we have to emulate the type of leader that people actually want. Now, a few other little bits and pieces that I've figured out just in my journey from building a team. Right now, I've got about 10 or 11 people that are under my management, video CEOs. Many of them are video editors, creative types, you know, we've got some sales people, et cetera. So when I first started hiring people long ago, in one of my first businesses, I didn't really get hands on with the actual management and day-to-day -day workloads, which was a massive mistake back in the day because I realized then that it meant that there was no culture in the company and there was not really any you know, people that you could rely on. There was no support structure or, or anything like that. And it was a huge mistake and my company ended up not working, not just because of the team, but I'm sure that that probably didn't help. If I had good team members, maybe I could have done better work for the clients or maybe they could come up with ideas or, or whatever. Anyway, in hindsight, it was a lesson learned. It wasn't a failure which led me to giving up. It was a lesson learned that I could now apply into something else and be better for it. And so now this time around, I've got so many employers, to me it feels like a lot at least. You know, in order to make sure that there's some level of company culture, at first I was just doing a weekly meeting and then I realized that, you know what, we need to do dailies. Even if it's just like a 15 minute conversation to see how everyone is. Because my company's remote, so it makes it a bit more difficult. If you have a brick and mortar business, if you have an office where people go to work, it kind of just takes care of itself. As a remote company, it's a little bit different. So, you know, people work from home, they work for coffee shops or whatever, and they don't get that culture, they don't get that one-to-one -one attention from people, they don't get that community feel. And so I felt it was very important important to make sure that we did that by having the daily meetings. One of the cool things about these daily meetings, especially at my company, is that many people can come onto these meetings. Not only can they ask questions and just chat about, you know, normal social stuff sometimes, but we can also use those meetings as a way to demonstrate new software, new tools, new video techniques, new marketing techniques, new ways of doing things. And it's a real shared collaborative community feel, which I love. Very often I sit back and I let the others do much of the talking. and. 
much of the demonstrating of new stuff. And that's at least, you know, what I think is, is the perfect kind of meeting. At this stage, some people might think that it's a total waste of time, but for me, it at least builds company culture. In a remote business, it's very difficult to have that. So that's one of the main things that I've implemented in my business that has allowed me to become a much better leader in what I'm doing. Of course, you've got to make sure you pay your team correctly. You're going to make sure that you're there for your team and you put them first. I get comments from some of my team members that I'm often too chilled, which I think that's just natural. I am quite a chilled person, although they do know very well that if they don't deliver the work, then there's going to be some kind of consequence from it, right? I'm going to be on their back. I'm going to be telling them that they need to get stuff done because at the end of the day, I'm paying for them to be there, to be with the company. I expect from the trust that if I'm going to be a bit more lenient with things, be a bit more chilled, that they also can be trusted to do the work. So little bits and pieces like micromanaging things, I don't believe any of that. I don't believe in it. I hated it personally when I worked a nine to five. And so, you know, I expect my team to come in, they do the work, they get it done, they deliver the work on time to deadline, they suggest new ideas, they come to me if they have any questions, if things are going to be delayed, they come to me. And this all comes from just building myself into that kind of leadership position that I would want someone to be if I was following instructions for someone. They have to respect you at the end of the day. If I don't respect you, it's going to be very difficult for me to follow your advice and your information to take your orders. So in return for that trust, I get trust back and the team are then also paid for their work effort and the time that they put in, which is another thing that I realized was working in nine to five was that you get paid a salary, but there's very few occasions where you can get an increase in your salary or there's very few ways for you to make more money. And I think that's such a shame in a lot of businesses. I think it's one of the major flaws actually with like capitalism and, and uh, company ownership and things is because yes, you can offer people awesome salaries, but you should also give them the opportunity to make more money if they do extra work or put extra effort in or spend more time doing the thing, right? If they want to work weekends, they maybe should get paid more. As an example, you have all this talk about like a four day work week and stuff. So people want to work less, have less days, but they also want to get paid the same, if not more. It doesn't make any sense. Absolute wild that people think this, especially with all the inflation going on right now, all the crisis with money and yeah, and they want a four day work week. How, where do they expect the money to come from, from the business? It does not make any sense to me. But the way I see it is that, you know, if they want that, we can look at it the other way. If you're going to put in more effort, if you're going to do better work, then you should be able to get paid more. So what we also do at my company is we add ways in for the team members to be able to make more cash. We've got affiliate models, commission models, and uh, you know, little bits and pieces that I can't really share specifically on this video right now, but when you come and work for my company, then you know, that's all explained to you. But these are all ways that I've been able to create a team that is able to deliver the type of work that we're doing at my company. And we're able to not only deliver like really awesome videos and content for our clients, we're also able to do it on time, you know, to deadline consistently over a period of time. And we can do it for multiple clients. Unlike most agencies, you know, the more clients that you take on typically they all get less uh, attention or, or quality of work with us we're able to maintain all that just because of the way that the team has been structured and from what i can see what from what i can tell you know most of the team members they love working for me they love working for the company especially with the video editors i make sure that when i hire someone that they are actually passionate about video editing if you're a video editor and you're so passionate about it you could see yourself doing it you know forever i know forever is a long time but if you could see yourself doing it as a full-time job like that's what you want to do you don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer like you want to be a video editor, but you know that maybe the money's not there compared to a doctor or a lawyer. I want to be able to provide you with a position where you can do something that you love and that you're passionate about and where you can make more money potentially as a doctor or a lawyer through the systems that we set up in the company. And so this way everyone gets to benefit and you get to do something you love and you're helping me because I'm able to grow an awesome company. That's the way I see leadership, making sure that everyone is happy, everyone is getting some level of benefit from the thing that is happening and that you're pulling everyone in the same direction as you. I see way too many businesses, too many leaders, that excel at what they do, but they climb the mountain whilst everyone else below them just stays at the same. And I think that's really unfair. And I think it's a major issue that we need to be able to fix when it comes to business. I think if everyone is responsible for the work that they do and everyone is in control of how much money they can make, then the business can just go to any level that you want it to go to. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.